Evet başladık şu anda. Andrew, we are ready. Hi oh, hello. Hi. Um, so yeah, welcome. Um, so uh, I should start by introducing myself. So my name is uh, Andrew, Andrew Bircher. I'm the regional manager for St. George's University uh, for the Middle East and North Africa. So um, I'm hoping to meet as many of you guys in Turkey when the opportunity arises. Um, I'm quite new into the job, so this is my, I think, second week. So <laughs> this is why you will, won't have met me before, but I'm here to give some information about the program, our MD program, with its pathways to the UK, USA and Canada to become a specialized resident doctor. Um, so I have a, a presentation that I think would be quite interesting uh, to everyone here, um, which I shall give in a, a few minutes once we've done all the introductions. Um, so also on the call, we have our representatives here in Turkey, if you guys would like to introduce yourselves. Hello. Can Hello. everyone? Oh, you're okay. <laughs> now, uh, can everyone hear my hear the, the presentation so far? That's always a key question to ask at the very beginning. Because is herkes all... kendini tanıtabilir mi diyor acaba? Herkes bir ismini yazsa şu anda. Can anyone, everyone introduce themselves? Okay, so shall I begin by showing everyone the can everyone hear it? Andrew? Hi. Hi, we hear you well. Yes, okay. So there's quite a lot of background noise there. That's all I was concerned about. So I should go through the presentation. Um, if, if, if things come across, please ask me any questions. I'm, I'm happy to help. Um, so firstly, yeah, like I say, let me introduce you to St. George's University. As you can see from that photograph alone, it's... Um, it's certainly a very different kind of university. There's some there's some great um, YouTube links I can send to you guys at a later date that will show you a bit more of a, a virtual tour of the campus, which is based here. Now, this campus was established back in 1976 to quite a small, to quite a small university with only I think not even one international student. Uh, but to date, now we have over 3,500 students on campus and 3,000 members of staff to support those students. Um, it's a half a billion dollar campus. So everything that you'll experience as a learner, as a student is second to none, basically. It's, everything is beyond industry standard. Hence why we're able to offer such a unique program um, and towards becoming a medical doctor. Now, this seems kind of callow. So the interesting thing about um, the pathway that we provide here at St. George's is that it's truly a vocational pathway. So it allows for um, progression onto what is a very highly regarded and therefore highly uh, position. The slide in front of you here shows the average salaries of our of graduates coming in as a newly qualified doctor into the United States. So as you can see, once you invested your time and your effort into the program, you will then be able to have a massive earning potential now. In the UK, it would be slightly different, um, but predominantly most of our students go from our Grenada base, Grenada base, sorry, to over to the US to go and um, practice over there. Um, but as you can see, it's not a bad one. I've had, to be honest with you, I've, I've been thinking about retraining myself since seeing, seeing everything that's possible here. So... Yeah, there's an awful lot to be seen. 
Now, interestingly, as as you probably have done through your research, it's very difficult for international students to be, to apply to US medical schools. Now, we've got a completely a, a different pathway in the way that we go about things. So mm -hmm. last year alone, we placed 996 international students into US med, into US residencies to the point that we're such a, we are the largest medical school in the world. In the US. Um, next place, one in every 100 doctors in the USA is a St. George's graduate. To the point where it's even one in 10 in the state of New York. So what we were able to then, the way we go about through our integrated learning is to create a completely unique pathway. So as a student, you will not have to um, gamble on your matches and things uh, to establish so, 96% of our students, so the point is you look at your residency in the last couple of years, you will be matched to your speciality and given a, a hospital to work with. So a little more about the campus. As you can see, it's stunning. Um, I don't know many any universities I can, that I can think of where there is a beach as part of the campus. Um, in fact, it's, it's so much to do that you can actually, there is its own medical, it has its own scuba diving school. So you can actually go and learn to scuba dive when you take some time off from what is a very difficult and hard working subject to study. Um, so within there, so I should go back. So everything you see here on these pictures is part of the St. George University and we have accommodation on site and um, travel in between. And as a student, you're highly supported. And I mentioned before the number of staff that we've got available to support you guys Andy, is. Uh, I we cannot see anything on your screen. Oh, they can't. Is it not sharing? Yeah, we cannot ah, see. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Let me try this again. The action seems to have, it seems to have frozen on the site there. Right. Um, Okay, let me have a look again. You can click on the actions button and then you can click enable screen sharing. Yeah, I've clicked that again and it's not seen live. Uh, it's doing some, it's now just gone completely blank. What it was. <laughs> so uh, that's not great. Um, let me try the link again. I should just reestablish the link. You guys can still hear me, okay, though, yeah? Yeah, we hear you well. Let me just. Okay, grand. I'll, I'll re-establish the link and see what happens here. Nope, it's giving me a completely blank screen. Ah, well, there we go. Um, okay, well, what we could do then? Um, I will share the slides with you to share with the participants after um, the further part of the conversation, if that's okay with you. Yeah, sure, we can do that. Yeah, yeah. We can, we, sometimes, it, you know, that's, that's the joy of... Um, Using <laughs> everything online, and sometimes these things just don't work out. So, I'll continue what I was saying about the university, uh, and then share the slides afterwards. So, as I was saying, so we have um, on-campus accommodation, um, which is a you know, it's, you know, it's quite a reasonable cost, and includes uh, things like indemnity insurance and also malpractice insurance, because as a part of the integrated learning. Uh, which I should t tell you a little more, more like further along, you will be not just doing theory, you know, not reading theory, 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 theory for years and then practicing. You'll be taking theory, putting it into practice, taking theory, put it into practice. So, for example, I mean, our, our cadaver to student ratio is four, four students to each cadaver. So it's very much a practical and hands-on way of learning, hence why you're able to become a doctor in such a short period of time. So now, as I was saying before, there's something quite unique about what we're able to do, and that pathway to becoming a physician is quite unique here at St. George's. So the, what we'd look to do, so if, as a graduate from in, in Turkey, you'd be looking potentially at the six-year medical program. Now, that would be based on an 80% um, high school grade um, and then we, and then an additional IELTS test on top of that. Now, it sounds a bit strange when you're thinking about becoming a doctor in six years, given that, you know, you look at some of the pathways where you have to do the 
maybe a UK CAT or a NEAT or a US CAT before you even enter medical school for six years or so, yeah, between five and six years to even get to the point where you graduate with your MBBS. So what would happen here at St. George's is that you'd do two years of pre-med, um, which would then lead you on to the first year of your four-year medical uh, doctor program. Now, after that first year, so within three years of study, you'll have a Bachelor of Medical Science. So you've already got your first, first award after three years of study. Then, after an additional year of study, you'll then take your US M MLE1, which you'll be happy to know that it's, it's another test. Um, we actually have a 97.2% pass rate for the US MLE1, which is the highest in the world. Then, for the next two years, you'll be continuing on to do your placements. Now, I mentioned before about how we're able to place so many students. Now, we do this because we have a placement team and our student support team, as well as supporting all the other things that may happen as a student, there is a specific team to help match and place students into the hospital of their choice and where they can, they'll match it to the speciality of your choice as well. So if you are looking to become a, a paediatrician, for example, we would look to find the best placement for you for those two years in a paediatric hospital in the US, UK or Canada. So we've had recently had five uh, Canadian hospitals come on board with us. Um, so yes, it is quite a short period of time. However, it is a anyway, it's quite an intense learning time. You know, she, she, to become a doctor, you've, you've got to be 100%. You've got to be completely 100% committed to getting it because it will be hard work along the way. But the rewards are there at the end, not just in a financial way, but also in the fact that you're doing such a unique profession and such a, such a vital uh, profession. I think that's the way to see it as well. So, um, so what we provide, we'll provide you with a US-style medical education. So after you've left those two years of placement, you'll, you'll then be graduated as a medical doctor and therefore able to practice and go into residency after your six years of study. So that alone is, well, it's huge, isn't it? Really? Um, so you'll leave as a postgraduate medical doctor straight in. And we will also, at that point of finishing, we, we will then look to help you place into your full-time residency you know, we've got the matches if you've done, and particularly if you've enjoyed your two years clinical uh, placement, it may be that your your role, next role, takes you into there. So there's lots of exciting opportunities. Um, so what we offer is kind of a, say it's a bit of a unique proposition, really. Uh, and the value for that is significant, although, you know, you'll, people often will look at the, pro, the costings of programmes and think, oh, that's a bit off-putting. There are things we can talk about regarding scholarships. Uh, we have scholarships available, one of the biggest part of scholarships for the MENA region than anywhere else in the world, St. George's. So, you know, the higher grades, the better potential scholarship there is. Um, so if I go through some of the sort of uh, the value you would get from that. So you're looking at sort of postgraduate, excellent postgraduate training residency rates, um, say 96% last year. Um, up from 91% the year before. So, you know, we're slowly but surely progressing towards that golden idea of 100%. Now, you know, let's, let's be honest, that's not necessarily always the way. Um, but if there are problems and, you know, that finally you don't get your placement, you'll be welcome to come back to St. George's and have a year of education on us, basically. Um, so we've got award ring support services and a dedicated international students office. Now, we're conscious of the fact that the investment of your time as a student, uh, also your parents and other people in your life who will invest their time into you to help you get into this position, we are there to support you all the way. And um, we will put in a dedicated team who, I think we've got an eight to one staff student to student ratio. So again, it's all particularly high. Um, so yeah, I mean, ultimately, the idea is you get to become a doctor sooner. Um, now, at the moment, given the current health situation around the world, I think the more doctors, the sooner the better, by the sound of things. Um, 
So I'd encourage people to have a, to consider this. Um, and uh, sorry for uh, interrupting, mm. but uh, could you please send me the slides and I will try to open it on my own screen. Maybe it will work. Out Ooh, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no worries. Let's have a quick look. Let's see if it'll go through. Yeah, you have. Um, no, if you could send that. To, um, if you'd let me know, I'll that, send you should... a blank email right now. Okay, and then I'll just respond to that. And hopefully, the guy, because it's this honestly, just to look at the campus alone, it is a it's, just, it's a stunning place to study. And there's a lot of information in these slides Hi. that will help uh, decision making as well. And also, it stops me just talking all the time, gives it gives everyone a break from my voice. <laughs> just a second. No worries. receive it let's have a quick look i should do the quick send and receive there mm -hmm. not yet let's see what i can do That's not come through just yet. So let's see what I can do here. I just sent you a second time. <laughs> no worries, thank you. Uh, seems to be I'm having all sorts of bother today. Yeah, yeah brilliant. Yeah. Okay, that just come through there. Superb. So I shall send you the slides on there. Uh, great stuff. Yeah, let me send you a copy of those back. Uh, go. That's saying, <laughs> of course, now saying the file is too large to share. I do have an additional one that I could send through, actually, if you give me just one second. You can also send it through WhatsApp if you can. That's a good idea. I'll just, uh, this, I'll send a smaller one as well. I think sometimes, you know, the video, um, that can tend to cause uh, the, the file to be too large. Uh, Right, so here we go. Right, it should be coming through, but for some reason it's not. Oh dear me. Right. Well, I think what I'm going to have to do, I have to just log in and out for one second. I should join you guys again in a second. Excuse me. Okay. I think my computer is so funny. I'll be with you in just one okay. minute. Excuse okay. everyone for the delay. <laughs> <laughs>
Merhabalar herkese. Ee, ekranın paylaşamadığından dolayı şimdi çıktı. Ah. Hey, I'm going to try and see if this will work this time. So, can everyone see that? Yeah, does that come through? Yeah, I can see it. Everyone can see it. Yeah, perfect. Ah, we're alive. <laughs> um, so I won't go through all the slides again because obviously, you know, people have been patient enough. Um, so I'll skip through um, a couple. So I was there. Um, so there we go. Ah, so this I thought was the quite interesting one. So this is the... Com Yeah, this is how in Turkey the length of time that it takes to become a doctor. So that's quite an interesting one. And I will, of course, share this with everyone once I'm able to. Now, we're going to see if this video works. If it's too slow, we'll stop and we'll go back again. Okay, so I'll we'll just try this one and see if this works for everyone. Bastion has done so much to help me prepare. From the very beginning, they always try to keep in mind what's our end goal. I believe that SGU has really helped propel me towards my lifelong dream of becoming a doctor. I'm very confident that I wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't have gotten residency at Mayo Clinic if I had gone to any school other than St. George's. SGU was the best investment I've made in my entire life. Absolutely. He has an outstanding network of thousand School of Medicine graduates who practice in all 50 United States as well as 50 countries around the world. That's truly remarkable. We've been in existence for over 40 years, so we've trained a whole lot of doctors. And probably one of the most unique advantages of coming to St. George's is the amount of support that we give to our students. We attempt to make every student that we accept to the med school be successful. We can offer a wide variety of educational pathways leading to the MD degree, which means the vast majority of students that want to be physicians are going to become physicians. Studying here is quite demanding, but I believe that the school is uh, here to help us, supporting all the students and their families, and that is a big thing. On campus, an SGU lifestyle, I think, is similar to the school in the States, except you have this beautiful environment where you're really focused on becoming a doctor. This is a comprehensive campus. We have 65 buildings. We actually run our own bus service. We have our new exercise facility, restaurants, and our brand new dorm is spectacular. We really cater to the unique needs of all of our students and create an incredibly safe and supportive environment. The school really tries to help you make sure that you know what you're doing and it's just really nice to have such a big uh, community. The key to medical education is the learning group size because that's the environment where you're learning medicine and most of our curriculum is taught in small groups of eight. One of the things we do here is we've set out DES, the Department of Educational Services, where our students learn how to learn. We really focus on the individual. It's really student-centered education. We work with students in workshops. We work with students in small groups. We also do provide one-on-one -on -one support for students who are developing their English language. They provide practice tests, educational material, all of that. And so when I took step one, for me, it felt like taking another St. George's test. We're often judged by the success of our students in USMLE exams. And in fact, we are virtually identical to a US medical school in our success rate. But in addition to standardized tests, I think we are particularly good at preparing students to be lifelong learners long into their careers. The first two years in Grenada really prepared me well to succeed here in clinical rotations. And I do believe that these clinical rotations are probably the most important aspect in trying to narrow down what you want to do for residency. St. George's allowed me to do multiple rotations, to repeat rotations that I was interested in, and were incredibly encouraging. We have relationships with over 70 hospitals. So it's really an opportunity for our students to think about, where do I want to train to get the residency that you're looking for? I'm a second year resident and I know this is a privilege. It's a path that not everyone gets to work. And SGU is really the stepping stone that enabled me to be here. If you look at the average residency placement, all those numbers are on par, if not better than the US averages. And that's a testament to St. George's. 
I'm a big believer in diversity, and all one needs to do is come on the campuses and walk, and you look around you and you see diversity. I've met so many great people from so many different countries, and they all have different experiences from their country. You learn about their backgrounds, their customs, their cultures, and having that exposure is crucial, you know, in terms of being able to take care of people down the road. Our students have the opportunity to train all over the world. We have actually been working in partnership with Northumbria University in Newcastle, England. And one of the things that we can now offer to students is to spend the first year of your medical curriculum in Newcastle. It gives you a perfect combination of doing one year of school in England and one year of school in Grenada, and then your clinical rotations in North America or to come back to the UK. That type of international medical education is not only extremely valuable, but is quite unique. Being a doctor in the 21st century, I think not only means being able to take care of patients, but also making sure that you continue to better yourself as a doctor. That's a really key point here is that St. George's does a phenomenal job at getting you ready for your career. I don't think that I would have been able to get the experience that I've gotten here at SU anywhere else. As soon as they drape the white coat over you, you kind of have that sense that this is the beginning of the journey. My parents feel pretty happy about this because I'm doing something which is beneficial for mankind. If you put in the work, I mean, doors will fly open for you. And I'm just very, very fortunate and thankful for that opportunity. Oh, what's going on again? There we go. Oh. So, as you can see from those slides, I'm hopefully, do they work for everyone? That wasn't too slow or anything. Hello? Is everyone still there? Yeah, we are here. <laughs> I, was, I was wondering, I thought everyone did, I was like, oh no, not this. <laughs> <laughs> so, that slide just highlights what we are offering to students. Um, and where this offer can take you. I think that's a, a vital thing. It's not just, you know, what we are saying to our students you can do. It's also what you want to do once you finish your studies with us. Um, so I shall skip on a couple of slides. I've gone through these bits here already. Now, this is quite a good one. I say we mentioned in the video the amount of time that we've been operating and therefore the number of students we've uh, worked with. Um, this is a very interesting fact. We are the number one international provider of licensed physicians in the U.S. To the point that the number of physicians that we placed into the U.S. last year alone was more than any of all, all the medical schools in the U.S. combined together. So that that's how significant we are in our offer and what we can bring to you know bring to the table and bring to your opportunities as students. Now, um, that previous slide it mentioned about our alumni, we put students in touch with our alumni all the way along the line as well. So you'll be able to speak to people who've had the experiences that you're going to and to give some advice on how best to, to get through things, how to work on things and, and knowing what to expect as well. Yeah, we're, on, we're we are on parallel in our student and support. Yeah, we want to make see the yeah, uh, chat box uh, on the right panel. People mm. Yeah. Uh, there are questions there. You can follow the questions and answer them if you want. Great, so far, I'll just come out of that there. Let's see where that is. I've got some people here. Ah, brilliant. So people say they can't see. <laughs> so that's fair enough. Uh, okay, great. Uh, on the, yeah. there is like next to the chat box, there is questions box. You can click on there. Brilliant. So what have we got? Uh, okay, so yeah, um, from Marie Curie, um, uh, so things like the costs of living and scholarships, etc. So it depends on where you're looking to live, and it's quite an apt slide. So you can, if you can see here, you have a choice between Newcastle or Grenada. Now, the cost of living uh, in Grenada on campus living is about $1,200 per month. Now, that includes your food, your transport, um, your insurance and everything along those lines. Now, if you look to Newcastle, it's roughly about six to seven hundred pounds, which is equivalent of about nine, nine hundred dollars or so per month. Um, you also mentioned 
you might asking here about the percentage of scholarships. Um, so what we're doing at the moment, um, we are working to try and give as many students scholarships as possible. I think at the moment we're about 99.99% recur recurring on the number of students are able to we're able to provide scholarships for. Um, we very much are looking to invest in the region um, and to help support the goals of the, the people within the MENA. Um, regards to an entry exam, no, you'll be quite happy to know if you get your 80% in your high school, then you won't have to do an additional entry exam. There is a requirement for an IELTS. Now, for the IELTS, it's quite high level grades. So um, that would be level seven across the board and no less than 6.5 in writing. But that's the only other entry exam. Um, if you're looking to go to Newcastle in the UK, um, so that will have to be a UK VI IELTS, uh, so you can get a visa. There are no visa requirements to coming into Grenada. It's visa on arrival. Um, okay. So they've got one more question there from Maricure, then I'll come up to Ikin there as well. Um, so life science master, master's graduate, um, we may actually be able to map you directly into the first year of the medical uh, of the MD program. So we have the whole program is seven years with multiple entry points based upon uh, your current qualifications. So what we do there, we ask you to share your qualifications um, with with the guys here, and we just look through it. We go through and we'd find the point of entry for you. So it's mapped against every level to ensure that you know you're not repeating anything or anything like that okay so i hope that helps marie curie um, if there's any more throw it out there as well um so sat is TOEFL. so firstly i'll start with the ib um we accept the ib diploma um, so you require a minimum of grade point 32 points uh with three high level subjects now obviously you're going to look at high levels are going to be biology and chemistry because that's where your focus is going to be. Um, then with the IB, you can come into the five-year program. So you do one year pre-med, followed by the four-year MD. Um, although I know I appreciate that the IB is taught in English, we would still require to have a an IELTS as well, because that's part of the medical registration and the requirements there. So SATs and TOEFL. So TOEFL is accepted, um, again, similar levels. So you do the equivalents against the IELTS. So um, a TOEFL uh, is so it's around about uh, 100, I think, for the TOEFL, 100 overall score. And again, ensuring those, those higher levels. Um, now, SATs. OK, with SATs, you'll go, you'll go into um, the probably the seven seven year route with just SATs, six or seven. So let's have a look at my entry criteria here. Yeah, so SATs, but we would, I would encourage you to do your APs. If you've taken the American school system and you're looking at your SATs, then I'd encourage you to take APs, do the specialism in biology and chemistry, and it will save you a year's study. And also you'll go in at a, another, at a higher level. So you're looking then at the, uh, back into the six year program. Okay, so the IELTS, I can, that's correct. So the last question I've got here at the top there is that the overall point must be 7.0 and above, yeah, and no lower than 6.5 in, um, oops, sorry, what's that done? I don't know what I've clicked there. <laughs> um, yeah, so no lower than 6.5 in writing. Okay, is that all the questions? Have we got anything else they'd like to know? Yes, we are, uh, we are only a school of medicine. Um, so we well we do actually have veterinary programs if people are interested in becoming a vet. However, we specialise predominantly in medical degree programs. Um, hence, why we've got such high rates of success um, because you're focused solely on that subject and there's no filtering. The staff are dedicated for there. Okay. Any more questions? Always happy to answer questions. If they come along, if I'm talking too much, I should shut. We'll go on to the next slide or two, but if any more questions come in, please just, just let me know. 
So we spoke about the pathways. Um, let's see if it'll let me progress those slides. Can everyone still see those? Yeah, hello? See the slides, yeah. yeah. Brilliant, okay, so we're talking about the pathways. Now, these pathways allow for you to enter the UK or US system. Now, for those pathways, a six year program, you can enter into the UK or Grenada, and then you can choose your pathways from there. If for whatever, sometimes some students they have a lower level, they'll enter into the first year for a foundation program, and that's only delivered in Grenada. Um, so upon, let's say if we're looking at the six year route, you'd have two years of pre of pre-med in either campus, so Grenada or Newcastle. Then you come into your first year here. So you've done your three years and you leave with the med science uh, degree, Bachelor of Medical Science. Now that's either, again, in either Grenada or Newcastle. Year, year two has to be studied in, in the Grenada. The reason being because of the US MLE, that has to be studied in Grenada and finalized at the end of that year and can't be completed in the UK. However, you can then choose to enter the US or UK medical system or the Canadian medical system in those last two years for the clinical placements. We've spoken about the, what's available, the amenities and the accommodation. So that was on the video. So I won't go through that again because you know, I don't want to keep banging on top of the head. Accreditation. So once you've got your MD qualification, you can pretty much practice anywhere in the, around the world. Uh, we do significant work with uh, Doctors Without Borders as well. So it's you're not just you know stuck in one medical system. We're the registered with the GMC, um, reg registered with the World Federation of Medical Education. It is a highly recognised and I say we are, we are number one in the world for what we we do. Uh, and we spoke about the residency rates. Yeah, so we're going through that. I say ninety four percent. And that's huge. I mean, our attrition rate as well. So if you're looking at students who start the program, there's only a 6% dropout rate of our students throughout the period of the MD. Now, given the intensity of the program, that's quite phenomenal. Um, and that shows about the level of support students get and the close tuition through there as well. And as you can see, year on year, our residencies are growing. And we hope again, we kind of really hoping to get close to that 1,000 mark in 2021. I think that would be a real, a really seminal thing for us to be able to do. And as I say, we are huge in the placing the number of students into the US. Um, and that's all our students, but we are number one for international students like yourselves. So the USMLE, um, has everyone heard of that? Is that, is that something people have read about or experienced before. Hmm? Okay, so this is a qualification that allows um, for practicing medicine in the US, UK and globally. This is how we're able to get our, this, these are our pass rates. This is based on the integrated learning system. Now the integrated learning system is provided by, I think only two of the medical schools and they, they're being Harvard and uh, Cambridge if you want some similar examples. So this is why we're able to achieve a 96% pass rate on the USMLE. Uh, I think they, they mentioned it in the video a couple of times about, you know, the preparation for the program in that year, the preparation for the test is second to none. So you're not gonna, you're not gonna fall into any traps. You're not, you know, when you're first experiencing the test, it's, it's not like you're just flipping over a piece of paper and it's your first time ever seeing that sign of the standardized test. Student support is key. Um, so these are something that will help you along the way, all the way through your studies. So your time management, study skills, all these things that are, well, they're vital as you study, particularly given the, the workload and the intensity of the study. This is where we come in. So I have an open door policy, basically. If there's something that's concerning you, go and see the guys, we'll work things through from there. Ah, and I mentioned that before, so 6.1 attrition rate, um, I'll skip that one ahead. Now this is really good, uh, so prior to your first term of study, um, you will be assigned a college to make sure that you have your small group sizes, 
uh, a really you know, great welcomes and you feel comfortable from the moment you arrive. Um, you know, we want to ensure that you're happy from day one because that makes everything else much more easy to, to go out from there. And again, we talk, I spoke about the numbers. You know, there's 2,000 faculty, 1,500 clinical faculty. I mean, you can read the numbers there, equaling this, this faculty student ratio of eight to one. You know, you, lots of you know, I mean, well, not before I started working, I considered the idea of a medical school. I've got this idea that you know, hundreds and hundreds of people in a lecture room, you know, looking down at a chalkboard or a cadaver stuck in the middle somewhere. Um, whereas here, you've got eight people in each classroom. Um, so you're always going to get the best support that you can possibly get. Now we'll get down to the nuts and bolts. So we have our application system. We have an online free, appli uh, free application that you can utilize. So working with our team here over there in Turkey, you can be able to utilize this and the services available here to be able to do your application. Once we get through to the point here of accepting your offer and submitting your deposit, that is when we'll, we'll we'll be able to support you and give you your scholarship and the amount that you receive in your scholarship. And um, today our scholarships are roughly between 90 and $120,000 over the course of the program. Yeah, so we go back to English language, it seems to be going in circles we're here. Um, so there's your the IELTS requirements and the TOEFL um, and the visas, which we spoke about briefly as well. So I won't go through that with you again. Um, I think this is true. This is this is really sort of our mission statement and how we go we look at about things. Um, that that is, I mean, the main thing: getting you to your goal. You know, it, it's study hard, get there. This is a genuine career pathway. You know, this isn't you know so things like the MBBS and other other pathways. You know, your match rate is fifteen percent. We're at ninety six, and um, you know. Once you've invested so much into a program, you want to have something at the end of it. And this is what we're able to do for you. And here's some of the things that we're able to do, speaking of which. <laughs> so we've got a contact sister. Sebastian is my colleague. Um, I, should, I should add my own details onto there as well. But also now you're welcome to contact me anytime and I will share with you, as I should put it onto the chat group, my email address and phone number as well. So this is me. Um, so I'm more than happy to answer any questions. Um, so, so I'll put in my. We're, we're based in the Emirates, so um, I've got an Emirates mobile which I can't I can't remember to hand right now, but I will uh, provide just after the slides are finished as well, so you can WhatsApp check in. You know, say I'm all, always welcome to answer and help with any questions. So yeah, that's that's pretty much all the all the information I can give you right now. Um, if anyone has any questions, please jump in. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. You know, and if they come later, may, you know, I know there's a lot of information to digest here, uh, but if they come later, I'm happy to share those as well. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you for everyone who okay. joined us uh, for this webinar. Um, that's the end of our webinar, I guess. Is it? I, yeah, if no one's got any questions, I say they have my details there. Um, and it's a pleasure to meet you all. I look forward to hearing from you. I say the, the more questions, the better. Um, if you actually give me one set, I could say, oh, I'm trying to see if I've got my mobile to hand so I'm able to give out my mobile number. Um, oh, I actually do. So I'll put that. <laughs> so I'll put my mobile number on the chat as well. So we've got everything. And, you know, people are more than welcome to contact me at any time. People are asking if you can share this presentation. Uh, Certainly, yeah, yeah. Well, I shall add that across. Uh, what's the best way to do that? Is it? Can I attach it to the chat, or what's the best way? Um, let me just ask my IT department. Just, to, just please, okay. yeah. Let me see. So let me see what I can do. Nope. Okay, so you can click on the actions 
and share a media. Yep. Share media, brilliant. Uh, so, so the presentation. Ah, I shall find that. Let's, let's close it down so it pops up. There we go. Now where did I leave it? That's always the challenge. I tend, I tend to, I tend to host things in strange places. Um, If that doesn't work, uh, you can upload it on WeTransfer. Hello? So is that back on? It's back on. <laughs> Great. I, I, I <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to change that. Uh, <clears throat> right, let me see if I can share this first, and then I shall run away. <laughs> The files actually says it's too big, so I should drop box it. I think you can lower the uh, the voice from your yeah. speakers. Is that a bit better? Yeah, maybe yeah, a little bit more. If you can lower it, it's better. I think it's it's sort of reverberating. My yeah. own voice, isn't it? Uh, okay. okay. Oh. says you can you can upload the video I'm just on mute it. we transfer .com and then we can share the uh, presentation with the participants Katılımları için herkese teşekkür ederiz. Ee, şimdi kendisi bize sunumunu WeTransfer olarak gönderecek. Biz de sizlerin burada kayıtlı olan e-maillerinize WeTransfer linkini göndereceğiz. Ee, oradan kendisiyle ilgili yapmış olduğu sunumu ve bu yayının e bilirsiniz. Herkese çok teşekkür ederiz.